since 1966. This is NBC4's News Conference with Conan Nolan, Southern California's longest running public affairs program. On this edition of News Conference, perhaps never before has California's governance at the state and local level been more vital to the public health and safety than right now. Governor Gavin Newsom has been credited with acting swiftly against the coronavirus pandemic, as has L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti and the L.A. County Board of Supervisors. And the number of deaths here, the nation's most populous state, are a fraction now being seen in New York. And while there's agreement that the stay-at-home orders must remain in effect for the next several weeks, Weeks, what about the economic collapse that we're witnessing with massive jobless claims? There are even problems with the distribution of checks from the $2.2 trillion aid package from Congress. And when can we go back to work? Or is that even a question that can be answered? We talk with State Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon and Burbank Congressman Adam Schiff, Chair of the House Intelligence Committee, and the former L.A. County Bar Association President Brian Kabatak about the crisis in the courts now that a disease has put a stop to the wheels of justice. Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at a very quiet Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. We've been preempted the past few weeks due to the network schedule, but now we are back with the hope of doing our part in helping you navigate what is one of the most remarkable and challenging periods in California history. We hope you are safe and practicing social distancing as we are here at Studio A, all our guests appearing by remote camera or Skype. First up, Anthony Rendon, Speaker of the California State Assembly, one of the most powerful positions in the state government. He's a Democrat from Lakewood. He joins us from the state capitol in Sacramento. Mr. Speaker, thanks for taking the time. Good to be here. Thank you. Do you know if any members of your chamber or the California Senate or your staff have tested positive for coronavirus and are currently being quarantined? There's none that we're aware of. The legislature appropriated a billion dollars for Governor Newsom to do with as he wants to address this crisis. Has he indicated he will need more funding? Well, the billion dollars that we authorized for the governor was, uh, was specifically for health care, uh, for buying hospitals, respirators, equipment, those types of things. Uh, there's some indication that he could spend uh, a little bit more out of uh, a, a bit of our rainy day fund that we uh, also gave him authorization to spend as well. Your plan is for the legislature to reconvene April 13th. Assuming that's not possible, are there ways you can conduct business without being under the Capitol Dome? Well, we, we have a constitution that was uh, written in the 19th century, um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of things like remote voting weren't anticipated, for example. We've looked at what remote voting looks like and the potential legal challenges, and to be honest with you, it, it looks as though it's difficult. We can uh, do things like take remote testimony, from other parts of the state, but we have to establish a quorum in person and in Sacramento to, to conduct most legislative business. There were 878,000 jobless claims this week, another record. Not since the Great Depression have we seen those kind of numbers that quick. We understand that the Employment Development Department is having a difficult time handling the surge. The website has crashed, phones aren't being answered. Is the state able to handle this? We're definitely uh, in, in contact with, with the folks there to make sure that they have, uh, they have all the resources they need in order to, to handle the load. I spoke yesterday to all eight of the mayors from my district to talk about what's happening in, specifically in my district. And I know the other 79 members of the assembly are doing the same thing. The jobless rates uh, and, and how quickly those, those have risen have, have been uh, obviously something that concerns all of us. And we're going to make sure that we're able to take care of those folks who are jobless. Former Governor Jerry Brown routinely talked about the need to prepare fiscally for a recession. There is a rainy day fund. Is that going to be enough to handle the shock to the state budget that's headed our way? There, there still is a, a substantial rainy day fund. We have a rainy day fund of in excess of $21 million in California. We're very proud of that. Our, I'm sorry, $21 billion. $21 billion. Our, our rainy day fund is larger than the, the operating budgets of about 38 states uh, in the United States. So it's a, a significant amount of money that we put aside uh, for, for a rainy day, for crises such as COVID. Uh, are we going to dip into that to, to make sure that we deal with this crisis? It's, it's, it's likely that we will, because that's exactly why we set this, this money aside. Characterize the challenge the state will be facing with the economic downturn in which we're headed. 
Well, I think the greatest challenge is the uncertainty. Uh, we don't quite know what the, what it's going to be like coming out of this. We don't know uh, what the what the economy is going to look like. We don't know the extent to which we're going to have a rebound once people are allowed to uh, allowed to come out of their homes. What we do know is that we have prepared. You mentioned earlier the twenty one billion dollar uh, rainy day fund that we have and that we built uh, painstakingly built over the course of the past uh, five and six years. That will help us, but we also know that the economy is going to have a tremendous impact on, on families. It's going to have a tremendous impact on, an, on, on folks who are suffering from, say, homelessness already. So we need to be sure that we're dealing with, uh, with those folks and particularly our most vulnerable populations in this state. How much contact do you have routinely with the governor on the response? And are there indications the state's early action, such as in the Bay Area, L.A. County, then statewide, are paying dividends? I've been in regular contact with the governor. We chat just about every morning or every other morning. He gives me give, gives us updates on on where we are as a state. Yes, I think our early shelter in place efforts, I think our early social distancing efforts help to sort of reduce the calamity and to keep keep it from being what it has been in other places. That being said, we know that uh, a, a lot of these victories are are, are short lived. So we need to make sure that we sustain all of these efforts. What grade do you give the governor? I think the, I think the governor deserves an A grade. The governor has done a great job of keeping Californians uh, up to date in terms of information. If you've noticed, the governor hasn't sugarcoated anything. The governor hasn't uh, said everything's fine, it's safe to go outside. The governor has talked about the reality of the situation, but at the same time, given people hope by talking about what they can do. What's interesting about the coronavirus is you, 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 we have uh, you know, a government of uh, uh, of statewide political leaders, but ultimately what the coronavirus is about and stopping the spread of the coronavirus is, is about folks in their own communities making sure that they're practicing, that they're washing their hands, that they're engaging in social distancing. And I think the governor has done a great job of, of sort of giving, providing agency to people and telling them that the coronavirus, the potential to contain the coronavirus is ultimately up to them, them uh, is up to themselves. President Trump has routinely praised Governor Newsom. He says they have a great working relationship. Uh, Mr. Newsom has said the president has given every assistance to the state that has been asked. How important is this bipartisan relationship we're seeing out of Washington and Sacramento? I think it's very important. I think that's what Californians want to see. I think that's what Americans want to see. When you talked earlier about the billion dollars that we authorized uh, the governor to spend on the coronavirus, that was a bipartisan unanimous vote in our house. So that says a lot about where the legislature is, what we think is important. It also says a lot about what Americans and Californians want to see in general from government at this point. What is your biggest worry right now? My biggest concern is uh, uh, that, that folks are going to stop doing all the good things that they've done. Um, we've seen, again, great efforts towards at social distancing. We've seen great efforts at, at, at uh, sheltering, uh, sheltering at home. Uh, I want to make sure that people continue those efforts, and those efforts are sustained, and they help us to, to battle this virus. California Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon, thanks and be safe. Thank you, Conan. Thanks very much. So is it time to start asking who in government should have seen this coming but didn't? Burbank Congressman Adam Schiff says he's introducing legislation for a 9-11-type commission when this is all over. That will we return.